So when do you get to decide it's your time to go? Do you? Is that possible? Do you get to decide when it's somebody else's time to go? Let's talk about that. Hi, I'm Tammy Sevko, and this is Worth Considering, where we take a look at real topics facing society and us as believers, and try and consider a better way to look at them. And today I wanna to talk to you about euthanasia and the right to die. I have so much to cover in this, and I've done this episode a couple times now and recorded it, and I'm gonna try and just hit very high points because there's so much to deal with. But I wanna clarify, I'm not dealing with what would be considered, what maybe we would talk about as typical suicide. Um, I hate to say it that way, but this is really dealing with with physical infirmity um, where people feel like they either uh, no longer have um, the ability to live or that they're they have a terminal disease and then also for others to make that decision for them so that's really what we're trying to address is that idea of like is there a point where people come to with physical limitation that uh, and, and disease that they should get to make a decision on if it's their time to go so I looked back a little bit and, and interestingly enough, the idea of suicide and euthanasia was really kind of um, kiboshed with the influx of Christianity because of what the Christian teachings are. Would you go back to the Old Testament, the law and the prophets of, and even the Torah uh, in uh, the Judeo-Christian understanding, you look back at that and there was this idea that man was made in the image of God and therefore if you take the blood of another human, your blood will be required at, at your hands. So there's this understanding that you don't get to make a decision to take someone else's life. Now it doesn't really address warfare and capital punishment. Those were societal things and decisions that were made that were not about one person making a decision for one person in that same way. So I'm not going to address that. That's not what we're talking about, um, even though I'd love to, but right now we're talking about about this idea that I'm gonna decide when it's someone's time to end their life so with the idea that su suicide and euthanasia were kind of kibosh there there was really as far as my research showed uh, a long time from the 16th century uh, kind of on where this was just not something that was really done or talked about and um, and it began to happen in, in the 19th century that there started to be a little bit more passion toward the, the possibility of this. If someone's really suffering, can we end their suffering? If someone's really, you know, a child is born with horrible deformities and has trouble breathing and, you know, is there a point where you just let them die and as a mercy to them? Um, there there was a lot of these conversations and, and, and people beginning to push back on maybe there is a time where it's okay. And, and, I, and as I was looking at it, I was really challenged too to think about the difference between medical intervention and to rescue and medical intervention for life. So the difference of if you see someone suffering and they're having an allergic reaction and their EpiPen is right there and you don't hand them their EpiPen to save them from that, the difference of that versus someone who, um, you know, needs a breathing machine to breathe, cannot breathe on their own. Um, and, uh, and I don't know. And is there a point where uh, their life is kind of ending Sounds so terrible. It's so hard to even say these things. But like, is there a difference? And 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 this is part of the argument. Like the contention is that is that there's a difference between like if someone's like gonna die anyway, and we intervene, like putting someone on life support, versus someone who is like they just got you know hit by a car and they need to be taken to the ambulance and and taken to the hospital to have a life saving surgery performed. Um, you know, is there a point where that's a difference because you think about people in countries who don't have those life-saving measures uh are, are are those countries immoral in the fact that they're not bringing those life-saving procedures over even if they can't afford it because if they exist we should be offering them like it just it gets like a tangled web of conversation on this and so when it comes to the idea of euthanasia, when it comes to the idea of mercy killing, you know, immediately I think of the Nazi regime and the mercy killings they did. And I'm not even just talking about the Holocaust in general, but I'm talking about when they would come into the psychiatric wards and clear them out. People with Down syndrome, people with mental disability who were, who 300,000 were mercy killed 
were, were released from their suffering because they couldn't live on their own. So they needed too much help. And, and these are people, I mean, there's a lot of arguments on whether it was, it was about too much money for the government. It was about not having those kind of impure, you know, genetics in the system. There was all kinds of things, but the reality was at some point a decision was made that their life was not as valuable as other lives. And that is at the crux of this conversation. At what point do we decide a life is not worth living? Now, first I'm talking from a euthanasia perspective, not a right to die. So I'm not about choosing my own life, but looking at others. At what point do you get to make that decision? And I would say, push, come to shove, argue all you want, but there comes to a point where you have to say, that's not my job. I don't get to make a decision if someone's life is worth living or not. I, I don't get to make that call for someone. It's, it is nature, it is God, however you want to look at it, but it's not me. On the flip side, the right to die argument. If I'm given a terminal prognosis, diagnosis, I'm told I'm going to like six months to live. You know, in, in multiple states now, it's legal for me to say, okay, well then I want to go out on my own terms. I want to take a pill. I want to be able to make this decision on my own. And. And in fact, it's been celebrated in our culture. Like, look, they're, they're really taking ownership of their death. And the reality is for us as Christians, there's a, a dilemma on that in the simple sense that we believe in God and that God gave me life and I don't get to make that decision. It's not even my life as a Christian. I actually gave it to him. So I really don't have the right. So I can see your argument. I can, I can see your argument. I can see the idea of looking down a, a black hole, it seems like that's six months long and it's gonna get worse and worse and your your um, capabilities or your pain is gonna increase and you're, you're, you're going to struggle. And I can see wanting to make a decision like that. Like I wanna end things before it gets too bad. I can see that. The problem is, is I can't agree with it because it's not my decision to make. It's not our decision to make. You didn't, you didn't create your own life. You don't get to take your own life. Now, the other factor in this that I think is important to recognize is that doctors don't actually know when people will die. They give a best guess. Sometimes it's faster and sometimes it's slower. I have heard a testimony recently of someone who her husband was given six months to live. He lived seven years, seven years. They had children during that time. She gave a heartfelt testimony on this, sharing the, the great years they had and the difficult times they had and that they have children together and that they had a beautiful life because he was an amazing man. And, and that was something precious to her. And so the fact that they didn't have that option, that that wasn't there was something that was helpful because honestly, there was times where they might've wanted to end things because it was difficult. But life has difficulties and I don't mean to, to lighten like how difficult that is, but we face horrific things at times. We face troublesome things at times. And if the idea is when we face those things, we should just end our lives or there's, there's an honor in just being able to say, you know what, it's time to go. I think we begin to like minimize, first of all, the human spirit and the fact that we're fighters and we're meant to be able to overcome. And we can see victory in things that we don't think we can. And that when we're pushed to a place of challenge that we can rise up as people. But on the other side, we also have to recognize that we're not supposed to qualify our life just based on what kind of life we're living. You know, there's been a few movies in the last few years where a quadriplegic or a, a person who had a huge amount of limitation on their life chose to end their life. In fact, one recently, where it was kind of like they chose to end their life to free the other person from the burden of caring for them, caring for them. The message to others with physical disabilities is mind blowing to me. The fact that that wasn't even considered, it seems like people with severe limitations are supposed to be just a burden on their families. I, I'm supposed to, if I have a, a physical limitation, I'm supposed to now look at my life and go, you know what, it'd be better if I kill myself to release others from this burden. And I, I don't think the movie was necessarily trying to say that, hey, everybody kill yourself. But the message to handicapped people was clear. I mean, the idea of that is, is mind blowing. And this is where as a society, we're in trouble when we have these conversations, because when I can begin to qualify life and decide, well, this one is worth living and this one is less worth living. This one is valuable. This is less valuable. We are in a very, very difficult place. And I believe we are dishonoring God. 
I, I have relationship with people with Down syndrome. I know people who have very deep physical limitations. And can I tell you, even with the difficulties that sometimes their families face, there is not one of them who wishes their child was dead, who feels like that burden is too much to carry. Oh my goodness, the joy, the, the beauty of these people's lives. And for us to miss that is, is almost narcissistic as a society where we think we're so smart. And if we have all of our capabilities and all of our faculties, this is the prime life to live. I'm sorry, but no. We have got to see the beauty in all life. You know, you go down this pathway and suddenly if you, if you hit someone with a car, you know, right now it's called manslaughter if they die. But in this kind of a society, we could start putting a points value on people. Well, if they're old, I mean, probably you shouldn't get as much jail time or it shouldn't be as bad. But if they were young, I mean, they had a lot of life left to live. So their, their life was more valuable and you took a more valuable life. We can't go there, people. We can't. We have to be able to stand up for the value and the sanctity of life. Whether you're a believer or not, understanding the value of human life is critical to having a healthy society where we value one another and we care about one another. And as a society, we support one another. That is who we're called to be. Thanks for hanging out with me for a few minutes today. I appreciate your time. And listen, I'd love to hear your comments below. Please add your voice. But again, as a rule, if you're gonna rage, we're not gonna engage. This is a place where we learn and grow together, not to just whine and complain or, or rage against the machine, as it were, in trying to make our voice heard. We wanna be able to grow and be better for it. Thanks for sticking with me, and I'll see you next week.